I just wanted to start off by saying how um, happy we are to have uh, Naomi with us. Naomi from Israel. She's a jet setter. I think that's been on her. She was in Dubai or something. Uh, she, she, she'll tell us about it, I'm sure. But I just want to start off by saying that it's people like Naomi and Ahman that inspire us to realize that kosher food is really not Manashevitz and uh, stale gefilte fish anymore. You, you know, kosher food isn't, isn't um, tasteless wine and just uh, canned tuna. It's actually fun. It's fashionable. It's social. It's, um, what's it, sassy? Is that a word? Uh, there's got to be a nice word, it's but it, it, it's just gourmet. Exciting. Yeah, it's gourmet. gourmet and it's fun. And some of the finest wines in the world today are kosher and some of the finest foods in the world today are kosher. You know, there's, there's so much amazing kosher food out there and it's really not that difficult for us in Palm Beach Gardens to adopt a kosher lifestyle, even if it means one day a week. It's actually funny. I was shopping today in Publix. I went to get a couple things for the for tonight and then of course you know ended up filling up my cart and all and these were just extras and as i was at the checkout and my whole you know the and the belt was so full of all this beautiful delicious stuff and i was thinking my gosh you know not too shabby for a kosher a kosher purchase in palm beach gardens you know it's not like we're talking about i was in some kosher supermarket somewhere and it's really incredible how, really how easy it is today to keep kosher from anywhere. And, you know, we've, we've been talking through this, uh, through this crazy time that we're all living in. We keep on mentioning how, um, how it's really such an opportunity that now that we're spending more time at home to bring Judaism into our homes and to really start doing things that we never did before. If, Shabbat, you relied on getting inspiration from the rabbi or from that feeling that you got in shul. Now you have to bring it home. You have to literally, you have to make your own kiddush. You have to light your own candles. You have to bring your own aura of Judaism into your house now, which is really so powerful and so incredible. And what a special opportunity. And I've had this conversation one-on-one -on -one with a lot of you that I feel like now is such a great time to consider making your kitchen kosher. You know, it's, you're not going, you're not going out to eat that much. You're cooking at home. And we really felt that having Nomi would be such a great opportunity for you to see how easy it is for you to really um, convert your everyday meals into a kosher meal and how really the ingredients that we use mostly are kosher and it's really, really not such a big deal to make this step. And I want to encourage you and I want to also tell you that of course we're here to help you if, if that is something that you want to do and to show you how easy it is and how no big deal it is to do. And I just want to say one more thing, you know, even if uh, going kosher, it's actually this week's sort of portion which talks about a, a fight that Jacob had with uh, the angel of Esau. And uh, they had a fight and the, the, the angel of Esau dislocated Jacob's hip. And because of that, we never have rump steak. I, and, and I know that um, Naomi can probably correct me on the exact parts of the animal, but I don't think we have T-bone steak. I don't think we have rump steak because you've got to take that annoying sciatic nerve out of there in order to make it kosher. In places like Israel, very high density population, high density kosher populations, you people will go to the hard work of travering, of removing the, the sciatic nerve. But for the most part, we just sell the back part of the animal to the Gentiles, sorry, to the Gentiles who don't care about the sciatic nerve. But it's, this is this week's Torah portion. It's one of the first laws in the Torah, which tells us about the mitzvah of observing what we eat. We're so careful about the information that comes into our minds, the emotions and the conversations that we expose ourselves to, because we know what kind of negative impact it can have on our frame of mind. How much more so is it true when it comes to you are what you eat? That when, when, when we eat food that is good for our souls, for our neshama, it makes such a big difference. This is what we've been doing for 4,000 years since Jacob. And, and maybe it's time for us to consider doing the same. It's not all or nothing. You can keep a kosher home. And maybe when you go out, you do, you, you do whatever you do. You can do it in stages. You can do it slowly. You can even take one night a week, you know, which is a kosher night. And uh, whatever it is that you do, we're here That's to help. That's a great idea. I really like that. We're here to help and uh, guide night, you through the process. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to you, Hannah. Oh, and well, I'm getting ready to pass it over to Naomi, actually. 
Um, yes, it me. is. What's that? Oh, I don't know. I is Marsha on here? Um, yes, this this event is graciously sponsored by uh, Marsha Wolf, so we're grateful to her. Um, and uh, in terms of Naomi, I've I've been telling my friends that, uh, and I remember after last year's after last year's program, everyone was ranting and raving. She has a phenomenal personality. I love watching her on um, on social media because she's just so much fun, so full of life, so full of positive energy. She's always excited about something. And I thought that I had a lot of energy, but sometimes I'm watching her and I'm like, Oof, I'm getting tired. She's just so excited and has such a, a, a wonderful way of seeing things. And we're so excited to have her back with us tonight. So welcome Naomi, all the way from Israel. Glad to have you here. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Okay, fantastic. So I'm, I'm on spotlight, right? You guys can see me up close. Okay, fantastic. So it is one o'clock in the morning. Can you, let, can you hear me? Can you all hear me? We can hear you. Okay, so I've got in, in general a pretty loud voice. But I've, I'm at my daughter's apartment and I'm using her kitchen by it's 1 a.m. And we have two sleeping babies, so I don't want to wake anybody up. So I'm being very, I feel like I'm whispering, but um, I meant to bring my, my uh, AirPods and I left them in Jerusalem, um, where we were based out of. Um, but we've been back and forth between my daughter's apartment in Beit Shemesh and I have another daughter's apartment in uh, Jerusalem. So I, I'm shuffling between... I'm going to go home and I'm going to need a vacation. So, um, yeah, so just to catch you all up, I met you guys, I want to say February 24th or 25th. Am I correct? Um, of last, of this, of, of 2020, 20, I should have looked up the exact date, but I came to around then, 24th and 25th. We had no clue that in three weeks, the world was going to be turned upside down. I think about you guys all the time because you were one of my last events that I did. And I, I was in Florida. I did five events in four days built around your, actually your event um, because Rabbi Vigla had called me the July before. I was actually in Israel Um I got a phone call when I was staying at the Inbal Hotel from, from Rabbi Vigla and then, you know, to come and do a program in February, six months in advance. Um, and we booked that. And then around that, I booked all those other events. And I actually had brought my dad with me to, to Florida. He was visiting from Australia. Um, and I brought him to, and he, he spent a few days with me. And, and I didn't do it. My daughter Gabby was with me. I don't know if you guys remember, she was there. And, and it was the last time I saw my dad. I mean, you know, he's back in Australia. Thank God my parents are doing really well. But who knew that the world would be upside down like this? We've spent so much time indoors. I think I've done over 80 Zoom classes at this point. Um, lots of, lots of, met lots of people face to face like this, you know. If you can get a chance to meet people. So in between all of that, my daughter had, a little baby boy in June. Um, it's our first grandson. We have four daughters. We had a beautiful granddaughter two years ago. And now we have our first boy, which is a first grandson. And I fought very hard to get to Israel because you can't just hop on a plane like we used to. A whole new appreciation for that. And um, someone was able to get me in. Um, now there's a grandparent's visa. Um, but I wasn't able to make it because the baby was born right before the visa had come out. So it was really hard to get here. But I'm here and I'm so, so happy. And I hold this little baby boy in my arms. And, and, um, and my two-year-old granddaughter was actually born on my birthday two years ago. So we have this very special bond. And, and here we are, two daughters living in Israel, two grandchildren. And, and I'm so blessed. Um, so we're going to get started with an amazing meal. I love what uh, Rabbi and, and Rebetzin were saying about just connecting with food and connecting with kosher food. And here I am in the Holy Land and, and 
I'm feeling inspired every day, every corner that I turn. And I, I, I've had some beautiful experiences here. It is Erev Hanukkah. Hanukkah is a little bit more than a week away from now. And I've had about 100 donuts already. <laughs> if any of you are on Instagram and following me, I've been posting so many donuts. It's been amazing. And just, you know, connecting with food. And I went to the markets and they eat seasonal here. They don't have fruits and vegetables dragged in and flown in from across the world. Everything that you can buy in Israel is all seasonal. So it's really exciting to be part of the kosher food and the, and the food scene here in Israel uh, this, this week. So we're going to have today a great cooking class. Uh, we're going to be making we're going to be making three dishes and a cocktail. I think last time we didn't do a cocktail. This time we're going to do a cocktail and we're going to toast each other and we're going to toast Hanukkah and our being together, even though we're apart, we're still together because we can all face each other. That's what I did with all these soup class and I said to everyone, you know, think, you know, you have to look for the, the silver linings and everything. So, um, at least if we had to have the pandemic, we had it in time of technology. You know, in 1995, we didn't have Facebook. We didn't have Zoom, you know. So at least if we had to have it, at least we have this technology now that has gotten us through. All right, I think we should start off with that cocktail. Is everyone ready to make a drink? Okay, so what we're gonna do is, um, before we start, I'm gonna ask, encourage you all to make this a conversation, okay? We have a chat in the Zoom. So just type in questions or ask me to repeat things. You should all have the recipes. Um, if you're not sure um, of anything, type it in and uh, the Vigglers will read it out to me um, if there's anything and then we'll, we'll open it up to the floor afterwards um, later on in the show. Okay, so let's make that cocktail. We're going to start off with cocktail shaker. I bought this with me from America because I didn't have much but have a cocktail shaker. All right, so cocktail shaker on the side. And I'm going to be moving my, my camera around so you'll be able to see what I'm doing closer up or further back. Sometimes I'll be cut out because I want you to concentrate on the food um, and be able to see the food. Okay, where is my oh, right here? So cocktail shaker on the side. We're going to start off with some vodka. I had to raid my son-in-law's vodka supplies, so um, he had some waiting for me and the other two drinks I bought in Jerusalem, he brought it down with me. Um, okay, so we're going to start off with... Um, it's funny, I, I had all my... Um, I have cheat sheets for my, for my classes because even though I wrote all these recipes myself and I've done a ton of demos, I didn't know any recipe by heart besides challah and potato kugel. So everything else I have my notes. Okay, I'm actually going to set that aside because I realise we're going to do something even fun. We're going to have fun with the glass. Okay. I'm taking a small pot like this and adding into it equal parts of sugar and water. Okay. And we're going to bring that to the boil. Okay, so we're all doing this at once. We're just going to, we're making it something called the simple syrup. We want to just I don't know if you can see it in the pot like that. But I mean, I'm just, I want to bring that to the boil. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a glass like, uh, uh, like, a, like a plastic bowl. And you really cute glass. This one's got a cute little pink bottom but we're going to decorate the top of the glass because you should always when you have a drink and you want to have something fun let's decorate the glass too this is really fun for like a Purim party or a Hanukkah party okay so uh, before we do our cocktail we're just going to get that glass set and bring that up to the floor 
Okay, remember if you guys have questions, put that up in the chat. Um, you know, if you want to have it, we're going to be making a meat meal because we're going to be making some chicken. Um, but if you're having this with a dairy meal, you might want to use just regular milk. Um, if you're having it with a meat meal, you have all these great kosher products. Rabbi was talking before about like if you can make it kosher, why not? So especially if you can make a parv and have it with a, a meat meal, you have almond almond milk, um, you have soy milk. So we're going to be using that in our cocktail. Okay, so my tiny little bit of water and sugar have come to the boil. And I'm going to pour it into, um, I'm just going to grab a little glass. I'm just going to pour it into like a little bowl. Just like that. I'm going to let that, so here I have here. So, so it's equal parts. Oh, a third of it, if you only need, we're only making a little bit. So if, if you do make a little bit extra of uh, simple sh sugar, um, it does last for a long time in the fridge, but I'm only going to be making enough for that, like a small amount. But even if you do like a quarter of a cup or two tablespoons of sugar and two tablespoons of water. So what I'm going to hold this up. I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Okay. So I'm going to take my glass, the edge of my glass. I'm going to dip it in there. Just the edge, just the, in there. Can everyone see that? Shake it off. See, now I'm going to dip it into my sprinkles. Just give it a good coating. Look how fun the glass is already. You know, like margaritas have a salt rim. So this is going to have a sprinkle rim. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that on the side while we make our cocktail. Okay, is everyone good? Feel free to show me what you're doing if you're making it. Okay, so now we're going back to the vodka. So in my cocktail shaker, we are taking one ounce of vanilla vodka. This one is not vanilla flavored. Sometimes I don't have vanilla flavored. Regular vodka is good too. I've also done it with rum. Okay, so if you don't have if you don't have uh, vodka, you can use rum. Now we're going to do one and a half ounces of each. So I'm just, I look at this cute little measuring cup. If you're having one of these, you would turn it over. That's one ounce, and this side is one and a half ounces. So we're going to pour one and a half ounces in here. Okay, one. I feel like Tom Cruise in cocktail. Make it look fancy. If you when you do it in front of other people, go like this. They'll think you're so cool. Now, you want to shake it. Everything's in here. Is anyone making this with me? Come on, let's 
go. I want to see you guys shake. Oh, oh, what? I see. Yeah. I see the rabbi's got a glass. Who else has got a glass? Keith. Keith is, he's got, come on. Like, shake it up. I'm having a look on some of the other pages. I'm scrolling across some of the other pages. Okay. Put some ice in your glass. Put ice in here. Are you ready? Depends on the kind of milk you're using. If you're using milk or even heavy cream, it's a little bit lighter, but I'm using almond milk, so it's a little bit darker. How's it going? Lachayim. Keith, did you put the sprinkles on your glass? No. <laughs> Rabbi, you did. You did. All right. Everyone, Lachayim, nice to see you. All right. I'm not going to drink this now. It's too late at night for me to have a drink. I'm actually, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pour this back. I'm going to keep the glass. My granddaughter will love this in the morning. She think it's so cute. So I'm going to put, put this away. I'm going to drink this tomorrow. <laughs> actually, you can actually make a picture of it if you're having a party. One day in the future, we'll have parties again. And um, you can make a cute little picture of that also. All right, are we ready to cook? Everyone say yes. yes. If I can be hyper at 1 a.m., you guys could be hyper at 6.15, right? Okay, cool. I'm just cleaning out as I go. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to clean up a single. If you, and, and, oh, Rabbi, that looks amazing. Okay, it's parv because yours is a little bit dark. <laughs> okay. We're seeing if the Rabbi likes it. Okay, we're getting a thumbs up. <laughs> okay, I'm going to, um, if you can't see, you guys will let me know, okay? Um, we're going to start off by making our chicken first, okay? So um, this recipe I developed re pretty recently. It's actually not in my book. So I'm, actually, I'm seeing a question here. What is a good substitute for beer? So I, I, that's a great, I'm glad you brought that up. I get that asked that a lot. I would say ginger ale. Okay, I'm bringing it over. I'm bringing over my, um, the tripod so you can see. Um, I'm bringing, okay, I'm bringing everything closer to here. Can you, can you all see what I'm doing here in this workspace? Okay, fantastic. I'm just going to move things around. Okay, so um, I developed this recipe. Have you guys heard of Empire Kosher Chickens? Pretty well known. You can buy them pretty much all over the country. So I've become their brand ambassador. And if you go to empirekosher.com, you'll see a whole thing about like Naomi's chicken recipes and you'll see like I have like a, every month I write two new recipes. And this is a recipe that I wrote uh, in October and people went actually November, early November, and people have gone crazy over it. It's really great. It freezes amazing. So if you ever want to do prep in advance, it works great and you can freeze it. Also, it works well on all the different chicken parts as well. So if you like it on the bone, off the bone, tops, bottoms, I will, I can explain if you know uh, all the different, how each one of a different cooking time, but how the recipe is absolutely incredible and delicious. So we are going to start off with, I'm doing four pieces of chicken. Um, I'm just going to grab my fry pan. If you have... If you can, take the chicken the night before and, and brine it, like put it in a bowl, like marinate it in a bottle of beer, All right? So I've, I've done that and um, I've now 
drained it off and I've just got it here waiting to go um, into my frying pan over here. Okay, so this is the beer braised, the beer, bra the beer braised chicken thighs. Okay, um, all right, so what, what we're going to do now is we're going to season it really well with, um, can you, I just want to make sure you can see what I'm doing here. Can you see my chicken? Okay, so we're going to put the chicken the cutting board. Um, you'll do this with all the chicken if you're doing um, bottoms, tops. Um, you, know, you just want to cut off any of the extra. This, this. I did quite a few Zoom classes while I was in Israel and for pieces of cuts of meat or chicken I didn't think I could get, I actually bought it with me in my suitcase. I'm just cutting off all those extra skin, but this is this is chicken that I bought here in Israel. Yeah, I don't like those extra bits of fat, so I kind of just trim them back. And what I'm going to do is, I have in in a in my bowl here, I've got salt, onion powder, garlic powder, and paprika. But you can use any spice mix that you like. And I'm just going to. Mix it around and then I'm going to sprinkle all over my chicken. Some of the spices here are a little bit clumpy, so I'm just breaking that up. I'm just seasoning my chicken. Make sure it's really well seasoned. And then on the other side as well. Turn it over. You guys are up to me. You're all, you're all seasoned up. Okay. I'm going to... Bring that down like that. I want my pan to get full. I thought it was on there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get, take canola oil, a little bit of canola oil. There you go. Now it's staying on. Um, okay, so now it's we want our pan to get really hot. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our chicken and we're going to sear that chicken so it gets this really nice colour. And searing in the spices in general, like really um, because... Um, spices have their own natural oils. Cooking them in early into the recipe really like kicks up the flavor of the food. So like people always think you add the spices at the end. I'm using them really early on and searing it early on and just gets this really great flavor and it really helps bring up this great color also. So we're gonna just swirl our pan. Have all my all on the background you'll see all my my recipes good to you know uh, everything lined up to go but for the next recipe we want to get them nice and hot um now if you were to do this with just while that's getting hot if you do want to do a boneless right um you would do the same steps everything like like which like uh, the cutlets or the dark meat the dark meat cutlets you would also spice it up and you're going to sear it. The only thing that you would do differently is you wouldn't cook it now for so long. You only cook it for like 20 minutes, half an hour till they're cooked through. This yes, we're going to cook for a bit longer. Okay, so we're going to grab a fork from the drawer and 
Is that not the best sound in cooking? Come on, that is the best sound. Oh. I'm actually going to skim some down. I love that sound. There's nothing like a sizzle, right? Okay. We have another plate on the side waiting. Anyone have questions? Do I have any questions? Who's cooking with me? Is anyone doing the actual cooking? I see Keith is moving around. Keith, you're with who's cooking? I'm looking for the people cooking. How much oil? How many do two tablespoons? Depends on the size of your pan. Okay, why use canola? Olive oil. And just get, olive oil burns very quickly. Look at that nice color. A little bit more though. And canola, uh, coconut oil tastes, tastes coconutty. So if you don't like coconut, don't use it. If you like coconut, then you can use your tiny leaf. Are people having trouble hearing me? Are people having trouble hearing me? Sound is muffled. The chicken is soaked overnight in beer. If you have trouble hearing me, let me know. It's the sound of the chicken. The chicken is louder than me. Okay. Yeah, it's just getting a bit of colour. Don't burn the spices. Ah, oh, look. See, that's getting a little bit, but we've got it right on time. Give it a couple of minutes on this side. You want that really rich colour. So what I'm going to do now, did it get much quieter? Can you guys hear me better now? <gasps> that noisy chicken. Okay, so in the same pan, okay, the same pan, I'm doing nothing, have a look. Same pan, same spices, everything goes the rest of the ingredients. So the chicken is removed and is waiting on the side. And I'm going to put the let it finish this in a second. So, you guys saw what I did there. I removed the chicken. It's, it's waiting in the wings, part of the pan, because it's fried, right? Um, and in that same pan, I'm sauteing the onions. I'm going to build our, the rest of our recipe with all those flavors, adding layer upon layer of flavor. Okay? So, there goes that. I'm going to put the back on the food. 
we just want to season these, soften them, sweat them out. We want to bring out a flavour of the onions. You can use, do it in rings. I've actually done these as dice. Just give it a couple of minutes. I'm now going to throw in some garlic, crushed garlic. Mm. The house smells amazing. My grandkids are going to wake up and go, what's for breakfast, chicken? <laughs> They're going to want to eat this for breakfast. The house smells amazing. I'm like, no, it's cereal and milk. They'll wake up to the smell of chicken. Okay. Okay, here we go. Now, at this point, you could add in fresh tarragon. In Israel, I could not get any fresh tarragon in season right now. Chicken is, <laughs> chicken is healthier than cereal and milk. You know it, lots of protein. <laughs> okay, um, so you could add in the, the fresh tarragon. I could not get any today. Um, but I don't even know if I've ever even seen tarragon here in Israel except in the jar. But I would use fresh tarragon. I've also done it even at home without it when I haven't been able to get it. Okay, so now we're going to add in, in here is honey, sorry, I know I said honey, maple syrup, I love maple syrup, maple syrup and mustard. Right. Some for me. I heard you guys talking about alcohol. Some for me. Some in the food. Some for me. Some in the food. Into the last one. I just have to say that the aroma is absolutely incredible. I wish what? you could smell it. I wish you could smell the aromas through the screen because it is absolutely delicious. You, but it's great. It's a great, great recipe. And now it gets cooked back in here. And this is one of these dishes. Whoops. Look at that. Back in here, just moving this aside. It's one of these dishes that, I, you know, um, especially here in Israel, ovens are small. And before Shabbat, when you're trying to cook up a lot of food and all that wine, so, you know, you're having a Thanksgiving dinner and oven real estate is really important. And what do you cook when? The beauty about this recipe is you can cook this on your stovetop. So I'm going to give you two options. I'm actually going to opt for a different one than what I usually do because stovetop now real estate is very important to me for this class is what we will do now, the chicken recipe is done. And what we do is we're going to cover the chicken and we would leave it simmer and cook for an hour and a half on the stovetop. Or you can do what... Okay, so we'd leave it like this, covered. But because I'm in a cooking class and I want this to cook, um, so be ready for the end of the class, or even like um, I've got to do the rest and, you know, I don't have this, such a huge oven space. So what you could do is, um, so you would cook it. So, so this is for Keith, he's just asking. So at home now, I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do. 
is I'm going to actually remove everything from my pan and put it into a, uh, I'm just trying to do it this way so you can see. Pretend I had a beautiful casserole dish or a 9 by 13 pan. I'm going to take all this beautiful sauce. You leave it on the stovetop. The only reason why I'm moving it is because I need the space for the class. But if this works, I'm giving you another really great option to cook this recipe. So just because you know, you know, uh, I'm moving it off the stovetop doesn't mean you have to. You guys can keep it going. I just need the space for the class. I am taking this and I'm putting it at the oven at three, 375 to 400. I'm actually in Israel, everything's on Celsius. So I'm back to doing Celsius again in Australia, grew up doing Celsius. So now it's back to being Celsius. I'm putting it into the oven um, at four, probably about 400 degrees for about an hour or 375 for an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, so see you later. Okay, so that chicken is in the oven and we are gonna continue. Let's take a break and a catch up for any questions that people might have. I always like to build in a little break there for people to ask questions and stuff about the recipes. Do we have any questions? Where's Keith gone? He's my only guy that's cooking. Who else is cooking? The Viglas are cooking. Can you make it without the skin? Um, yes, you can, absolutely. Any kind, any kind of, um, any kind of chicken. Now, if you were to, to do this with cutlets or like pargiot, as they call it here in Israel, which is boneless, bottoms like schnitzel made from the bottom of the meat uh, of the chicken you would just um you would cook it for about half an hour on the stove top okay as opposed to like one and a half hours because chicken on the bone takes a lot longer to cook okay you me thank you because it's uh your inspiration that brought him into the kitchen check him out where's your face let's see let's see rabbi's cooking He's chopping I'm onions. Trying. I'm enjoying the more. Oh, yes. My second one. Yes. <laughs> I to make a second recipe of the martini. <laughs> That's fantastic. I, we call it drunk cooking. Yes. Drunk cooking. Oh. Can I just say the bottle, bottles of beer in Israel are massive. Look how huge this is. Like a much bigger than I am. I look at the railway drink. <laughs> The chaim, everyone, the chaim. Okay. I was a bit worried how I would do at one o'clock in the morning, but now it's quarter to two. I, do I seem like I'm tired? No, I could go all night. <laughs> okay, let's make soup. Soup is one of my favorite courses. Like when I go out to eat on Shabbat, I first thing I do, when we, we sit down at a friend's house, is I check the cutlery. What, if that's your, so this is the first time I'm sharing this out loud. <laughs> I don't even think I've told my kids this. I check the cutlery to see what kind of food we're gonna be eating. If we're having gefilte fish, we'll have a small fork, right? If we're having meat, which we know we're always having a meat, we'll have the big fork. And if on Friday night, there's a spoon, I'm checking that there's going to be a spoon because there's nothing better than chicken soup on a Friday night, right? Hands up if you're into chicken soup on Friday night. That is the best. Even in Florida, I got two hands from Brandon Goldsmith. Yes, two hands. I would put up, if I had more hands, I'd put up more hands. Love soup anytime. Um, Shabbos is always chicken soup, but during the week, especially in New York, where I'm from, I know. 
despite the accent. Um, it's it's cold and even in Israel now it's a little bit chilly and there's nothing really nicer than a bowl of soup to warm up your neshama, to warm up your soul. My husband does not love soup, um, but even even he will eat like a like a few tablespoons and it, like once he does, I'm like, go oh, and try it. Like, ah, like there's something, you know, we try to encourage a lot of soup eating also fresh vegetables and you'll see that my soup has really nothing in it but no, I don't use stock I don't use you'll see it's just the flavors of the vegetables they're going to make this soup so rich and highly and delicious okay and the soup is great because it's got it calls for beans that could not get white beans in Israel what would if I'm going to put this out to you guys what do you think if I couldn't get white beans what kind of legume or similar would I put in my soup remember I'm in Israel no white beans, chickpeas. <laughs> Good, Robin. You get to the top of the class. Chickpeas. Um, I, I I sent the list ahead to my daughter um, before I came. I came to Israel on one day's notice. I got my visa on a special visa to come on Tuesday morning, and I had to book my ticket for Wednesday night at a very short window. So I she helped. I had a few classes that I was giving while I was away. So a few times. The theme of, you know, classes this time of the year is winter foods and soups and I'm doing the soup a few times because we can't get white, white beans here. I'm like, chickpeas is the best. Okay, so I'm going to bring it over, my giant soup pot. I'm going to move this back and forth so, actually, so you can see all the different things that I'm doing on this before we even get to that. Um, okay, roasted garlic. Here is a head of garlic, which is a great key ingredient and why the soup is so flavorful. So what we do is we take the garlic and we, I'm just not sure if you can see this. Can you see what I'm doing? We're cutting off the top of the garlic head, exposing the inside like that. You with me? We are now going to take some, actually, I want to get a piece of foil. Oh, 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 oh. I have it. Okay. Um, we're going to take some foil. We're going to put it in the foil packet. And we're going to put a little bit of salt. Kosher salt. And some olive oil. And we're going to make a packet. I'm going to throw this in the oven at 400 degrees for 40 minutes, okay? Keep that in mind. I actually pre-did one and I have one already ready here. So I've got one on the side waiting in the wings. Okay, I'm going to start building our soup. So, oh, Keith is doing it. Good job. Okay, how's the Vigla house going? We're cooking up a storm over there. I would like you to see right what's in my pot over here. Can you see what's in? You can see the bottom of the pot, right? It's not on, that's why I can stick my hand in there. Okay, so what we want to do is, again, we want to start off with, my grandmother always used to say, everything starts off with a fried onion. Everything that she would say in Yiddish, of course. She was one of those real, special ladies who knew how to cook incredible it was polish she was the most incredible european bubby um and she was an amazing amazing cook but she said you've got to start off with fried onions ta-da so we're going to get a big pot of onions frying up okay should we just want to make sure those onions get nice and hot right, so i've got onions here and I've got celery all cut up. Celery in Israel is really tiny, by the way. You know, we get these really big stalks. Um, it, she has this, you know, in America, we get these really big stalks of garlic. In Israel, they're like wimpy, it's very skinny. Okay, my grandmother was from Vilna. Okay, somebody just asked where my grandmother was from. Okay, here we go. Are we ready? Let's build that flavor. You're hearing that sizzle. Let's grab all that. So 
we're going to get that unused. So I have my on waiting in the wings is the celery, chickpeas or white beans, my head of garlic that's all roasted up, and broccoli. Now you can, I've got frozen broccoli. Um, you can use cauliflower if you want. You can make this cauliflower or you can do cauliflower and broccoli. So feel free to change it up. Okay. Chickpeas, cannellini, yes. Yes, Sandy, if you can't get if you can't get um cannellini beans, you can get um use chickpeas. I put chickpeas in a lot of my soups. It's got protein and it's got a little bit of carbohydrate and um it makes it creamy. Okay. We're literally watching water boil, as I say, when you try to like watch onions saute, it's like, it's not so exciting. <laughs> okay, uh, anyone have any questions about anything? I'm going to go to the chat just to see some of your comments. Should be. <laughs> okay, like, black beans, green beans, does it change the texture? I, I think if you did it with black beans, it would turn the soup black. Um, even red kidney beans, that's why I'm using the white or the chickpeas. They will keep it white in colour. Um, okay, I'm, what, I'm reading everyone's comments. Somebody, even, yeah, who wrote that, Susan? Even in summer, summer in Florida, I love soup. I know it's so good. Approximate what quantity of liquid do you take the chicken in? Okay. So um, that goes back to the other recipe. Um, I do one bottle of beer. And quite often I just, if I'm in a hurry and I really like that recipe, I, I even skip that step. But brine chicken is so much extra flavor. All kosher chicken is brined already because the, cut, the koshering process of soaking in water and salt is already brining it. A little these will call for brine chicken. I'm like, ah, we have that already. So, you know, just by buying a kosher chicken, you're basically brining already brine chicken. But I kind of like to give it that extra brine with that, you know, with that beer for this recipe if you can. Okay, here we go. Back to this. Back to the onion. Okay, I'm now going to throw in my celery. Celery is a very flavorful vegetable, always very good with soups. And quite often um, you'll, you'll have um, carrot, celery, and onions. But I didn't want it, like how we didn't want it to turn an orange. I don't want it to be an orange flavored soup. Oh, sorry, orange colored soup. So I'm really trying to stay with very light colors. You could throw in some zucchini into this as well. You only want green or white. So you do that. Now this time we're gonna, you know me, I like to build flavor and add flavor in early and season the lace. I'm gonna add in some salt. Can you guys see what's going on? This is a very big, deep pot. Okay. Chickpeas, one pan, two pans. Even though these recipes are quite simple, they're nothing fancy or complicated.
just the combination is, of these flavors that are great. And it's back up to me. This is the garlic that I cooked earlier. That's what I'm gonna do, watch this guys. I'm just gonna squeeze it from the bottom. And the garlic is popping out like that. I'm just gonna take all that garlic and I'm gonna drop it into my soup. Whoop, run away. Okay, so now that it's a bit messy. <laughs> My hands are not so good. So we've got a roast of garlic. Our chickpeas. Broccoli. So we're going to do a recap. Onions and, and just, just right in my hand. So we have onions and garlic cooking. We add some salt. Um, then we, add, sorry, onions and celery. And then we added in our garlic, chickpeas and broccoli. Okay. Now something that I want to share with everyone. If this is my vegetables in my soup pot, I'm going to add water to here, okay? I want to have less water because vegetables are already naturally made up of water. And the longer you cook it, the water will release. So if you're already adding water and then more water is released, what happens to our soup? It becomes watery. So I want to avoid that happening. So I'm going to do less water than what your natural instinct would say. And that way we have a really rich, thick, delicious soup as opposed to a lovely pot of green water. So I'm going to put this back nice and close. I'm actually going to take to give it a bit of a mix. And I'm going to start to Very exciting. It's probably about six cups of water. Okay, you see my, my water is here, down here. I don't know if you can see my hand. And the vegetables are a little bit up. Can you see? I'm just going to try to get you in close. Okay, so. Going to just cover our pot and bring the soup up to boil. We're going to let it simmer for about half an hour, 45 minutes. Then we're like, Does everyone call this? What does everyone call this? A zhuzha, right? Because it's the sound that it makes. So the zhuzha, we're going to zhuzha and then we'll have soup ready to go. It cooks fast, this soup. Super delicious and really, really easy to make. Which you know, we're all living busy lives and we all want to get out of the kitchen. And this is a really easy project. It doubles and freezes and quadruples are amazing. And I always have like a batch of soup, uh, a few different soups in my freezer at any one time. So if it 
one of my kids like at home says I have two kids that live at home still and um but haven't yet moved to Israel on me um they're like they come home from school or thank god there's school in New York do you have school in Florida the school in Florida for the kids okay um they'll come home you know she'll come home like I'm hungry butternut squash soup zucchini scoop soup mushroom soup broccoli soup all in the freezer you can take what you want you know so it's always good to have like you know nice batch this will make about four four or five quarts of soup okay we're going to start with dessert in a minute I'm just going to clear some counter space You know, when you do a cooking class at a big event, and I remember I did mine uh, with you guys, I had an assistant, I had a team. <laughs> it was a whole, uh, now there's just a team of me. So I, I have to just make a little bit of space. Because you're going to want to see this dessert. Okay, so I'm just wiping down the counters, leaving everything away because you're going to want to see this. Okay. Cooking is very messy, right? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, have you seen these in Israel? Has anyone ever seen this? This is very Israeli. They have marble counters or granite counters and they clean their counters by scrubbing them down and then they use a, this a sponger, it's called a sponger, and they uh, push the water like this. Can you see what I'm doing? Push the water back into the sink like this. Very Israeli to do that. Okay. Okay. I needed a big counter because you're going to see what I'm about to do. Okay. The best is for last. We're going to be making babka. Babka is like made a big impact across the world. Again, you know, it's like old school European cooking, but it's had this resurgence. Like kosher food is cool. Like it's it's an etch. Only because your Jewish food is cool and people love like traditional food with a modern twist. And this is what, um, you know, whether, whether you put inside, I've, I've had bobka with pulled brisket inside. Um, I've had bobka with chocolate or last week I was doing them with a pumpkin pie filling to, or a lotus bar, which is speculous. Like everyone has all kinds of fun, fun fillings. Um, so, you know, whether it's a modern twist on your babka or something traditional like you know this traditional jewish babka is still like very 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 popular have it have you ever tried this there's a question there i'm just going to go into the chat and read it have you ever tried this okay so it's funny i have not tried it with gluten-free flour um I, i'm not gluten-free so i haven't i haven't done it yet um but if you have done it, if you try and you have a feedback for me, I would love to hear. You can find out. I'm um, easy to find. You can, I think you have my number or email address on the recipe. Okay, so I'm going to just grab all my ingredients for the. Okay, here we go. So here is. Hmm. I'm going to move this so you can see under here. The soup pot is blocking, so I'm just going to put the tripod over here. Oh, good workspace here. Great. Here we go.
I'm just looking. I hate the count. I was looking for this. It was literally right under my nose. Okay. Uh, where's my cheat sheets? Right here. Okay. Here we go. Um, it's one cup of water. I'm just going to grab one cup of water. Okay. Here we go. Here we go, one cup of water. Let's talk about babka for a second, and not babka, let's talk about baking and, and um, yeast, making things with a yeast recipe. So this is what I do when I do classes with kids, and let's, let's do it with everyone. And I know that the uh, Vigler kids are popping in and popping out, let's see our kids over there. Shout out, come on, come back. Kids, where are you, Vigler kids? Can you tell me, what hi sweetie can you tell me do you know what else is made with a yeast dough what else is made with a yeast dough come on bobby zadies kids aunts uncles everyone it's open for everyone the kids know what do we make with a yeast dough put it into the chat i'm going to read it from the chat Hala. very good sandy Hala, yeah. What else? Hala? Uh, cinnamon bun. Good job. Cinnamon bun. Excellent. Yay. Bagels. Great. Come on. Something that's very apropos. This time of the year, we fry it. What else? Donuts. Filled with things. Donuts. Right? Donuts and, and pretzels, all made with yeast dough, and they all start off with the same process of proofing the yeast. So we're going to all proof the yeast now by doing water, yeast, and sugar. There are three things that yeast does not like. Number one, very hot water, hot, hotter than 115 degrees Fahrenheit. It does not like to be expired, which means who wants to be expired, right? We all want to live forever. Yeast has an expiration date because it's a natural, live, active ingredient. And if it, it, it dies out if you don't keep it fresh. So always make sure your yeast is fresh, not gone by the expiration date. And salt. Salt. It does not like salt at all. So salt gets added in right at the end. Salt, I always tell kids, is a yeast murderer. If you add in salt too early to the recipe, you, you'll get matzah, not, not fella. So we're going to do one cup of warm water. Let's do this together. One cup of warm water. Our yeast. And sugar. This is vanilla sugar and regular sugar. Sugar makes the yeast grow big and strong. Yeast and sugar love each other. It's a beautiful, warm environment. The warm sugar. Yeah. Are you doing this? Water, sugar, and yeast love each other and they go really well. I do not make my own vanilla sugar. Sandy, I buy it in the supermarket in my neighborhood in the five towns. And in Israel, it comes in little sachets. In, in, at home, it comes in a little tub. Okay, so we're looking for it's a froth. Okay, see so it's... Right at the edges here, it's, you're getting that froth. So I know my yeast is good to go. We're giving it a thumbs up. Okay, so while that is just sitting there a minute, I'm going to put that aside. We're going to crack two eggs. Do you know if you bang two eggs together, only one cracks? I didn't crack that hard enough. By the way, these eggs in Israel are tiny. So I'm very curious to see how this is going to work out, this recipe. And then the second one, you've got to crack on your own. So two eggs in, checking for blood spots, and our oil. A bit of light little whisk. Now what we're going to do is we're going to slowly add our flour. 
a little mix, a little bit more of a mix. When most of the flour is in, that's when I add in my salt. Now the rest of my flour. And I'm just, even with a fork, just mixing it together till it starts to get a bit doughy. Now I'm just going to use my hand. Okay, it's quite wet in my dough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some flour. Add some flour onto my counter. Can, can you guys see what I just did? Yeah. See what I'm doing? A little bit of flour, like that. And I'm going to just knead it. See what I'm doing? Look how nicely that came together. Still a bit sticky, but I'm just going to keep kneading it. Coming together very nicely. Is anyone doing this with me? Keith, are you cooking this? No, I'm getting a nap. He wants the chicken and the, and the soup. <laughs> I wish I could send this to you. It's a little bit. Where sometimes the air temperature is, you know, involved, it changes the recipe of when with yeast dough. If it's a hot day, it might be stickier. If it's a dry day, the dough in the air, it might be drier. Okay. So if it's if your dough is sticky, add flour, and if it's dry, add water. Okay, but that's really nice. You're touching it, it's not it's coming up, not sticking. Look at that. Beautiful. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover this. We're just going to let it rise. Is anyone making this with me? Couldn't find the vanilla sugar or the pumpkin spice. Hmm. I actually, I just realized I didn't put in my pumpkin spice. Okay. I got the pumpkin spice at Publix actually. Oh, the really? Sugar, um, I find that you can only get that in the kosher stores for some reason. They don't really sell them in the supermarket here. Really? But I did find pumpkin spice um, by the regular spice section. You have to look maybe off to the side. Yeah. Here, here it is. That's so interesting. I, I thought everyone saw it. Spice. Pumpkin pie spice. I'm sure you can buy it on Amazon. Yeah. yeah. Just washing my hands a bit. Okay, now okay. Out. okay, okay. Okay, let's make our filling. So you can do all different kinds of fillings. I think I, what filling recipes do you guys have? So I give you the pumpkin one, right? Okay, so this pumpkin one, I, and I have in my cookbook, a lot of you guys bought my cookbook. Hands up if you bought my cookbook last time. Woo! Yay! A lot of you bought it. Um, and if you guys still want it, um, let me know and I'll get it down to you. Um, I'll get it down to you uh, for a uh, special price for you guys. Uh, um, we'll, you'll, let, you'll let the Hannah know and she'll, she'll, uh, she'll get it out to you. Um, so you can do a chocolate filling in the book and a cinnamon filling. So I'm actually tonight going to do, you can make whatever one you like. I'm going to mix a little bit of the cinnamon filling with a pumpkin pie filling. But it doesn't matter. You've all got 
Hold on, I'm coming over. You've all got in front of you any case what you need. Okay, so we've got brown sugar, pumpkin pie filling, or we're going into the bowl. Let's see. Oil. I'm just checking, uh, making sure I'm not leaving anything out of that. Um, salt, oil, vanilla, sugar. Okay, so I think everything is in here that I need. But uh, I'm going to just switch it into a bigger bowl because I, I don't want to make a mess. All over the counter. Just um, take your whatever mixture you're doing, whether it's the chocolate. Um, let's check in with the Vigglers. Hannah, what do you make? What's what filling are you doing? I am in the middle of doing my uh, pumpkin babka. Oh, the dough. Yeah. Dough. The I'm dough. Okay, so I'm do a step ahead of you. I'm making my filling. My dough looks much more orangey than yours, though. Yours didn't really look like. Because you put in the pumpkin pie filling. I did. Are you doing pumpkin pie filling? I accidentally left it out. It's here on the side. No, but did you use the, the Libby's pumpkin pie? Not not in my dough. Oh, um, I think we made a mistake. I'm following this recipe. And it says to put it in. Oh, pumpkin spice. Not pumpkin filling. We made a mistake. But it's okay. You should know. You've, it's funny. Hannah, you've got my cookbook that has pumpkin challah, right? So the pumpkin challah the pumpkin, so the pumpkin has the pumpkin filling in the dough. It'll, it might just, you just might need to add a bit more flour in it. You should be okay. Some of the best recipes come from mistakes. They need to buy the Libby's. One second. Why am I confused? I'm gonna have to figure this out. Libby's. It says somewhere specifically Libby's. Um, I don't think that's gonna work. Um, so um, this is just the, the this is the my filling. It's like uh, fucking filling. It said the Libby's. I knew I bought it. I thought okay, I put it in the wrong thing. Does it? It, sh it should work out fine. Because, Hannah, we, I know it works out because of the pumpkin challah recipe. You can put pumpkin, you can put pumpkin into the dough. It'll be fine. Okay. Here, let's just add. Okay. So, and here is my, hold on. Here is my crumb topping. So my crumb topping is flour, sugar, and oil, and then I just pinch it together until I get crumbs. Okay, so here I have my crumbs, I have my filling, and I have my dough. I'm just gonna clean myself a little bit of space because we need to roll out that dough. Not just the one hand. Um, I'm just going to have a peek at the chicken. Chicken looks amazing and my soup is lowering on a simmer. Okay, I see Keith is also checking on his. Good job. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a rolling pin. My daughter has a better rolling pin than me. This is a marble rolling pin. It's actually so heavy. I could do like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, this is exercise. Okay, then it's, oh my God, it's 2.30 in the morning. Oh, I'm never going to be able to sleep tonight. I'm very hyper. <laughs> okay, we're going to pretend that a little bit of time has gone by. Hannah, you should definitely let yours rise longer. <laughs> Whoever is making, whoops, 
whoever's making theirs now should should you know um, just watch and and um, let it rise a little bit longer. Um, I want to say something about this dough. This dough makes two. This batch makes a double batch, so we use half now and half we freeze for a later date. The filling that I gave you makes one of the halves now. As hannah has got a lot of sticky dough there, right? Okay. Just add more flour if you want. So, so, um, so the filling is going to make half a half of the dough batch, right? Because the other half we're freezing and putting away later, and half we're using now. And the fillings that you have now are for one of those halves. Did I say that clearly? Remember, it's one thirty. <laughs> okay, cool. So what I'm going to do is I am flouring my counter, and just flattening it out a little bit. I'm taking my rolling pin. I've got my flour on standby. I always keep flour, extra flour on me. And we're rolling to the left, rolling to the right. I'm just going to put a bit more flour. Remember, this didn't have a fall. This only rose for like 10 minutes, not even. Okay, so we're just rolling it out. Moving the flour out of the way. See what I have here? A rectangle. Can you guys see that? Now I'm taking my filling. No matter what filling you use, and you're just spreading it all over. At this point, I actually use my fingers because that way it doesn't tear the dough. Okay, are you ready for this? Take it, try to take as much of the edges as possible, but leaving a tiny little lip. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it up and I'm picking it up and I'm making, see, like an edge here. And when I've got to that end, I'm going to go back the other way and then back and forth, rolling it up. a jelly roll, as they say. So I'm rolling it up, picking it up. I'm just going in each direction. So I'm concentrating. <laughs> okay. So 
Sorry, I'm just quiet there for a minute. Okay, just, I always wanna make sure you see what I was doing. I was just kind of lifting it to make sure it's not sticking. What I'm gonna do now is I'm folding it in half. I'm getting it upside down V. And now I'm going, yeah, whoops. <laughs> it broke. Doesn't matter, that's the beauty about this. No one's gonna know. So now I'm gonna be a bit more gentle. And I'm just folding it over, folding it over. See, it hardly looks like it's been damaged. I'm gonna put it inside my pan. Does it look like it broke? No, especially when we put on the chrome topping. Here we go. Ooh. Here is the crumb topping. Can you guys see that? That's my crumbs. And I just, the crumbs. And you know what I'm gonna do? I got the sprinkles out. Let's throw on some sprinkles. The kids will love that. Into the oven this goes. 350 degrees for about 40 minutes. Um, another little tip is if you don't want to cook it right now, like I am not going to put this in the oven right now because I'm not waiting up another 45 minutes for this to cook. I actually going to cover this and freeze it and cook it up fresh before shoppers. So I would take it out of the freezer, leave it on the counter and then bake it fresh. And no one will ever know that was ever in the freezer. Okay, was that hard? That was easy, right? Everyone thinks they can make babka. By the way, I just wanna say like you guys have now taken two classes with me. If you guys ever have any cooking questions and actually over the last year, some of you have actually reached out to me and we've become, in, we've communicated. So I'm very happy that, um, you know, that we have this uh, friendship between us. Um, me and the Palm Beach Gardens, um, Chabad. Um, so if you guys have questions, you can always reach out to me and ask me. Um, let me just do a quick finish off of what I'm doing. With a... You guys can all go eat dinner now. You all have your dinner. Okay, what I will do is we are back to the seat. have a lot of these are large immersion blenders. So that's what we would do. We would um, you I'm gonna let it cook a little bit longer, but but zhuzh it up and really like this is what I tell everyone, and I actually learned this from a friend of mine, who, Susie Fishbein, who's a culinary teacher as well, um, and she's written nine kosher cookbooks. It's called the Kosher, she wrote Kosher by Design cooking book, cookbook series. She told me when you're zhuzhing a soup, when you're blending it, just when you think you're done making it smooth, give it another two minutes, and that makes it really creamy, and that's so perfect for the soup. So those chickpeas really turn it just like cream without all those added uh, calories of the um, cream. All right, I'm gonna show you what the chicken looks like because it looks amazing. Just looking for my, looking for my daughter's oven towel. Oh my God, this looks amazing. Hold on, I'm gonna shut the oven door. Now this would look, remember normally we would cook this stove top. Did I just spill it all over the place? Ah, I could just tilt the camera, that would be better. Silly, silly me. Look, look how beautiful that looks. Good. Ta da! How was that? Smells absolutely divine. We're going to have a uh...
Very interesting pumpkin babka this Shabbos. Ashley will be our taste tester. She'll let everybody know how it came out. Thank you so much, everyone. We look forward to being together face to face. Yes. I want to see you all again. Yeah. And if anybody wants any of the recipes, feel free to reach out to Ashley. She'll email them over to you so you can make all of them. And tell all your friends to buy my books. But also, if you want other really good chicken recipes, go to go to um, Empire Kosher, and you'll see um, you'll see my tab, and you'll see all other delicious chicken recipes, all really healthy. Well, this was my first time making a beer braised chicken, and let me tell you, I think I'm hooked. And all my kids are just like, "Oh my gosh, it smells so good." Everybody wants to try it. We're waiting for it to come out of the oven. So, and I didn't make enough pieces for everybody tonight. It was just a sample. So we'll see. They already had chicken for dinner a couple hours ago. Yeah, yeah. All right, bye guys. Thank you so much. Good night. Good morning. Good night, Shalom, Lehitraot. Le yes. That means see you later in, in Hebrew. <laughs>